everyone, this is David Pike, the Motor City Mechanic. Now in today's video, I'm going to show you an alternative method for bleeding the air out of the cooling system on a Chrysler Hemi engine. That's going to include the 5.7, 6.1, and 6.4 liter engines. Now in the previous video, we talked about using the bleeder screw or bleeder bolt. Now if you run into issues, I'm going to give you an alternative method that's going to work just as well. So if you haven't watched the video on bleeding the coolant system using that port, I want you to stop right now. Up above and down below in the description, there's going to be a link to a video. Click on that, watch it, check it out. That's going to be the method I highly recommend using. That's the one that's going to majority of the time work fine. Now this video is about what could go wrong. We're going to talk about why you need to bleed, issues that might come up related to the bleeder, and then we're going to give you that alternative method. Now in that first video, we talked about having to use an Allen wrench to actually get into the port or that bleeder and back it off to get the air out. Now the procedure that we're going to be using for both of them requires the engine to be off. So that means the coolant's going to be cold so you don't have to risk burning yourself on anything hot. With the bleeder removed, you're going to add coolant to either the radiator or the pressure tank. Just depends on the vehicle that you have and what coolant system setup you have. You're going to add coolant until coolant comes out of that opening. Once it does, you're going to put the plug or bolt back in place. At that point, you're going to top off your levels and then you're pretty much done. Then you can start the engine and go through the normal warm-up cycle and check your levels again at that point. And then I recommend over the next couple of days, when the engine's cold, preferably in the morning, looking at the bottle, if it's the pressure tank, or open up the radiator and double check to make sure that you don't need to add any fluid. Over a day or two of doing that, at that point, everything should pretty much stabilize and you should be good to go. So with that, let's go ahead and get started on this video. Now typically, there's only a few times that we need to worry about bleeding the coolant system. Those can be either because of a coolant leak or repair that we made to the coolant system, such as a thermostat or water pump or possibly a drain and fill or coolant flush that we did when we exchanged the old fluid with new fluid. Any one of those can cause us to get air trapped in here. Now the main reason behind that is the thermostat. Because when the thermostat's closed, it creates a wall. Nothing can flow between both sides. We've got the engine side of the thermostat, and then we've got the radiator side of the thermostat. So as we're filling the system back up, that's where the air gets trapped because there's no way to get between the two. We can fill up the radiator side fine, but any air that's in the system will actually accumulate at the highest part of the engine and we've got a blockage here. Nothing can actually flow through at that point. So that's what we need to do. That's the reason why we would actually would deal with the bleeder screw to begin with. Now when it comes to the bleeder, there are four scenarios that could come up that could prevent you from being able to use it. The first one being the lack of tools. Maybe you only have a basic set of sockets, maybe some wrenches, and you don't have that quarter inch bit or allen for removing it. So at that point, you're kind of limited on what you're capable of doing. The other thing is, somebody else may have worked on it previously and they didn't have the correct tools and instead they inserted something that wasn't supposed to be used, they rounded it off and now you can't get anything in there to grab to back the bleeder off. Third thing is, it could be cross threaded or seized into the housing. At that point, it's not coming out. And then the final thing is, like I mentioned before, depending on the vehicle, you might not even have a bleeder. So what do you do if you run into one of those situations? Well, some people like to take the thermostat housing off and remove the thermostat. Then they fill the coolant system up until coolant comes out of that opening. Well, the problem you run into there is that you still got some air that's above. Not a lot, but some. Second thing is, that thermostat over a period of time, the rubber seal, it gets flattened. And when you go to reinstall it, it no longer seals correctly. The other thing is, you've got this off, you're filling it up, you're going to make a pretty big mess. So there's one other option I want to give you that's going to solve this. So let's take a moment and look at the front of the engine. We already know where the thermostat's at. We know about the bleeder screw on this particular one. Now what is coolant related that's high enough, that's got access to the air that we can remove to purge it all out? Well how about the coolant temp sensor? Now the reason why that coolant temp sensor works perfectly is, number one, it only takes a wrench to remove it. 
His second is, it's located in the same cavity or pocket of either the timing cover or the water pump as that bleeder. So we can remove either one of them, we can do the exact same thing and get the air out. Now in different engines, it may be positioned in a different location. This one is off to the right of the bleeder. And on this water pump from a different vehicle, you can see that the coolant temp sensor is directly above the bleeder. So it's actually the highest point in the system. So if we're gonna be using the coolant temp sensor for bleeding, what we need to do is remove the connector. Now the connector, as you can see, has a black colored body and a red section. That red section is a lock. There are two locks we've gotta use. We've gotta slide one out of the way and we've gotta squeeze another one. Now if it's been on here for a period of time, it may take some effort to slide it off. I might be able to do this one by hand, but let's just say it's on a vehicle, there's some dust, dirt, it's got some miles on it. You may want to use a pocket screwdriver or anything flat tip to kind of get up under an edge and kind of push it out of the way. Once we've got that released, now we got access to squeeze on the primary lock. Squeeze in here, slide it off. Now removal of that coolant temp sensor is pretty cut and dry. You need two different options. You can use a deep 19 millimeter socket or a 19 millimeter wrench. If you use the wrench, I recommend using the boxed end of it. Because it is a plastic sensor, it's easier to round it off if you use the open side of the wrench. In this case, we're going to be using a socket. Now before we reinstall the sensor, we need to prep it. Let me show you that. And when I say prepping the coolant temp sensor before reinstalling it, what I'm talking about is we need to apply some kind of sealant to the threads so there is no leakage of coolant past the aluminum housing in the plastic sensor. Now what we're gonna be using for coating the threads on that sensor is this right here. This is a high temperature thread sealant. It's made by Permatex. There's other different manufacturers out there on the market. Now this is rated up to 400 degrees Fahrenheit, which we already know the engine will never reach. And if you're familiar with Teflon tape, well this right here is the liquid version of that. Now when you go to apply the sealant to the sensor, one thing to keep in mind is you don't have to coat all the threads because only about half of the sensor actually threads into that timing cover or water pump. So what I do is I grab my sealant. I'm gonna make a nice little solid line around the lower half of the sensor. When I'm done, next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab my finger and I'm gonna smear it as I'm rotating it again. And that's gonna do two things. It's gonna wipe off any excess and the second thing is, it's gonna get it down into the threads. And there we have it, now it's ready to be installed. So now that we've applied sealant to the coolant temp sensor, we can start adding coolant. Now once it starts coming out the threaded hole that the sensor went in, just grab it and start threading it by hand. Now the torque for this, for those that want to know, is eight foot-pounds. Now if you don't have a torque wrench that goes that low, find you an inch-pound torque wrench. Now the spec for that will be 96 inch-pounds. So you have either eight foot-pounds or 96 inch-pounds. It's the same spec, just basically like I said, depending on what you have on hand for a torque wrench. And the last thing we gotta do is grab the connector and make sure we connect it to the sensor. Once installed, press down the secondary lock. And that right there pretty much sums up bleeding the air out using the coolant temp sensor. Remember, try to use option A, which is the bleeder. But if you don't have one or you got issues, you've got your backup plan now. So hopefully you learned something from this video. If you like it, please give it a big thumbs up on YouTube. Don't forget you can find me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. If you got any comments or suggestions about anything you saw in today's video, you can either leave something in the comment section below or you can email me at david at motorcitymechanic.com. And also, if you like to shop on Amazon, please make sure to use the link that's in the description below this video. Any purchases that you make will help support this channel. And once again, everybody, Thanks for always watching.